The AWARE2 study was the world's largest study and most comprehensive study examining what happens to the human brain and mind and consciousness as people transition from life to death when they're going through cardiac arrest resuscitation. The study was carried out in more than 25 hospitals in the United Kingdom and the United States, and we examined 567 patients. The study was able to show for the first time that the experiences that people have been describing about having a lucid, hyper-conscious experience where they can reevaluate their entire life, every memory, every thought, every intention, is real and is different to hallucinations, is different to dreams, and is different to other imaginary experiences. And in this study, we were also able to show for the first time the brain markers, the electrical signatures of these hyperconscious, hyperlucid experiences that are occurring in the brain not as markers of imaginary experiences, but as markers of a real experience that is occurring through the transition between life and death in all human beings. We were able to also identify the mechanism by which this experience occurs, which is that as the brain shuts down, because of a lack of blood flow in death, the normal braking systems in the brain are removed, known as disinhibition. This enables people to have access to their entire consciousness, all their thoughts, memories, all their emotional states, everything they have ever done, which they relive through the perspective of morality and ethics. And interestingly, they get access to other dimensions of reality as well at this time. The bigger ramification, I think, for this for the future is twofold. One is that by showing that the brain is able to respond and to show signs of normal electrical activity, even up to an hour after resuscitation, we were able to demonstrate for the first time that the belief that a lot of doctors have that brain dies after five or 10 minutes of oxygen deprivation is incorrect and the brain remains quite robust. And this now opens up the ability to create new treatments, new drugs that can preserve the brain and enable us to bring them back to life with a full consciousness in the future. It also is opening us up to exploring what happens to the human mind and consciousness as people are going through life and death, which will have very big ramifications for many disciplines, from end-of-life care for patients to also the field of transplantation. As we take organs from people to give life to others, we need to understand what happens between life and death. And so this is um, some of the big ramifications of, of our research. And, and for us, it means that we're working on both of these fields. In one aspect, we're developing novel new treatments that can preserve the brain, looking at a cocktail of different drugs and therapies. On the other, we're pushing forward for new studies that will help us to explore in more detail what happens to the brain in real time across the entire spectrum, as well as consciousness for ever longer periods of time uh, between life and death.